Hello, hello. Well, today we are going to continue talking about. Artesian product. Of two sets. And at the end, I will introduce. the notion of uh, binary regions, okay? Well, last class, we had two sets any two non-empty sets and we introduce a Cartesian product B as the set whose elements are all order pairs whose first component is in the set A and whose second component is in the set B. So all possible order pairs whose first component belongs to A and and the second component belongs to B. So remember that A and B are not necessarily different. And by order, what we are meaning is that AB is in general different from BA. The only case in which these two pairs are equal two pairs, let me put it this way AB and CD in a Cartesian product B are the same pair if the first component of the first pair is equal to the first component of the second pair and at the same time the second component of the first pair is equal to the second component of the second pair. So not only the elements that we are uh, choosing to construct this pair uh, matters, but also the order in which we place them matters. Okay? All right. Well, we are also assuming that these two sets are not empty. If either A or B is equal to the empty set, the Cartesian proof is going to be empty. So we have that A. Cartesian product empty set is equal to the empty set, and the empty set Cartesian product B is equal to the empty set too. Okay, so this is these are the basic properties that we have so far. Let's see one more example, and we are gonna uh, introduce other characteristic features of, uh, of the Cartesian product. All right, this is what we have so far. And what we are going to do today is, uh, well, we are going to see more examples and we are going to introduce other characteristic uh, features of the Cartesian product of two sets. Okay. Well, let's start by making emphasis on 
the following property. So uh, put it this way a little bit informally. Cartesian product is not commutative. What I mean is that in general, A Cartesian product B is going to be different from B Cartesian product A. Alright. And I will illustrate it with an example. you have a equals to the set because only elements are one and two and let b equals to the set whose elements are alpha beta and gamma all right well last class we also saw that if a and b are finite Containing n elements and n elements. Respectively, then a Cartesian product B contains n times n elements. So in this case, A contains two elements, B contains three elements, so A Cartesian product B and B Cartesian product A contain six elements. Is that okay? Two times three. Oh, A Cartesian product B is going to be all. Oh, they said whose elements are all order first that we can form taking the first component from a and the second component from b so if i choose one as the first component i have three possibilities for the second component which is giving me three order pairs and now the other possibility that i have is using two as the first component so i have again three possibilities for the second component. So, a Cartesian product B is the set whose elements are these six order pairs. Is that okay? B Cartesian product A is now the set whose elements are order pairs, but now the first component is coming from B and the second component of those pairs are coming from A. So, which are the possibilities that I have for the first component? Well, the first component is coming from B, so either I use alpha or beta or gamma as the first component, I will start with alpha. And which possibilities I have for the second component? Either one or two. So, This is B Cartesian product A, and these two sets are different because it suffices to find an element here that is not here, or an element here that is not here. And if, well, we have one alpha and alpha one. If we were talking about sets, these two would be the same object because the only thing that matters when we are talking about sets is what, uh, what elements we are putting in that set. But this is not a set, this is an ordered pair. And not only the elements that we are using to construct that pair matters. And not only the elements that we are using to construct that pair matter. 
also in which order we are placing them. So this pair and this pair are different. This pair and this pair are different. And this pair and this pair are different. Okay, so these two sets are going to be different. It's okay. But always the number of elements in this set is going to be equal to the number of elements in this set, but the sets themselves are going to be different. Do so far? Another property that we have is the following. I'm going to write here, uh, and we describe the property a little bit uh, colloquially. So I will put it this way uh, the Cartesian product. This is formally, this is not too good, but I think it's easy to remember. And I will, I will add all the formalisms that we need below. So the Cartesian product, put it this way, distributes respect to the intersection. Okay, and what I'm meaning here is that. Uh, if we have A, I put it this way, A Cartesian product B intersection C, this is the same as A Cartesian product B intersection A Cartesian product C. Is that okay? And that's what I'm meaning here. Okay. Well, uh, let's first illustrate this property here with an example, and then we are going to prove it formally using the definition of Cartesian Pro. So let's suppose let A equals to 2, 5, 7. B equals to happy face. Sad face. This in different faces. And C equals to happy face. Sad face. Okay? And I'm going to invite. Using these sets, I want to verify this equality here, this identity here. I want to see that this equation here becomes an identity with these specific sets, and then we are going to prove it in general that indeed this is an identity. So this is always true regardless of the sets that we are considering. And I'm going to invite uh, one of my former students here to do this example for you. All right? Hello, my name is Jose, and I'll be working on this problem. So the first thing I would do is uh, find the intersection between B and C, which is the elements that these two sets have in common. In this case, the intersection between B and C would be happy face, comma, and then the uh, sad face. So we represent the Cartesian product of A times the intersection of B and C which would be now 2,57 for A, Cartesian product, happy face, sad face. So we start with the, per, uh, with the first, they're going to have the first element of the first set, in this case it would be 2, comma, happy face, then 2, comma, sad face. Now that we're finished with the first element, we're going to go to the second element of the first set. That'll be 5, comma, happy face. Then 5, comma, sad face. Now, let's go to the third element of the first set. In the last one, it will be 7, comma, happy face. And 7, comma, that will be all for this problem. All right, I remember 
that every time you are talking about a set, we use the curly braces just to indicate where that set is starting and where that set is ending. Oh, so far good. So far good. So this is the first set here. So now we need to prove that performing this sequence of operations, so first the intersection of these two sets, and once we get the intersection, getting the Cartesian product with A, we are obtaining this set here, is gonna be the same result as is first. We compute this Cartesian product, then this one, well, the order of these two doesn't matter, and at the end, we intercept these two. All right, let's go, Jose. All right, so now we'll uh, compute this one. So we start by A, Cartesian product B. Um, in this case, uh, we'll have nine pairs. It will be two, comma, happy face. Sorry. Two, comma, sad face. Two, comma, serious face. Then we proceed to the second one. Five comma sad face, and then five comma serious face. Now we we'll go to the last element of the first set with the with the three elements of the which are the only three that we're missing now. So it would be seven comma happy face seven comma sad face and last seven comma serious face so that would be the multiplication uh, the Cartesian product of A and B and now we do the Cartesian product of A and C which will have um, six pairs So now it will be two comma happy face, two comma sad face, then five comma happy face, five comma sad face, then seven comma happy face and last lastly uh, seven comma serious face so we should multiply each one so yeah uh, yeah that'll be all for for this one for a uh, Cartesian product C now the intersection between them will be the ones that uh, they both have in common in this case um, we see two comma uh, happy face and two comma happy face. So this one is repeating is repeating both um, sets. Then we have two comma uh, sad face, which is also repeating in both sets. Um, we see two uh, serious face, which is not in, in the second uh, Cartesian product. So we go to the next one. Then we this one is also repeated in the in both sets. Um, this one is also repeating both sets and also seven and seven, right? So the intersection between both sets would be eight uh, Cartesian product C, which is which is the same that you obtained before because it's exactly. two comma happy face is the first pair here. 2 comma sad face is the first pair here, 5 comma happy face is the third pair here, 5 comma sad face is the fourth pair here, 7 happy face we have it here, and 7, uh, this one is sad face. Yeah, sad face.
because we don't have the serious face or the different face in C, which we also have here. So these two sets are exactly the same. And uh, well, at least with this example, this quarter here holds. Is that okay? Now, obviously, notice that in this case, this intersection is going to be a Cartesian product C because if you look at B intersection C, C is a subset of B. So this intersection is the smallest set. So here we got that this intersection of A Cartesian product B and A Cartesian product C was A Cartesian product C, but it's the same that we are obtaining here. And also we have verified that looking at the specific uh, pairs that we have in both sets. So, so far good. With the sample, everything is working. So let's try to do this in general, in which this situation is not necessarily the case. Well, now remember, what we are proving here is an equality between two sets. The only difference is that in this case, the sets that we are considering, they have uh, the elements in this set uh, conform to some specific rules that we need to use. But the general technique to prove this equality is the same that we use for any two sets. We need to verify that every element here is an element here and vice versa, because every element here is an element here, it's just proving this first inclusion here, but in general, we can have something extra here, and we need to prove the second inclusion to verify that indeed, they are the same, but we don't have anything extra over there. Is it okay? So, let's start by choosing any element here, an arbitrary element here, and proving that it's over there. So, let and we are choose any element here, but it's the only thing that we are gonna do is that since we know that we have a Cartesian product, that element is a pair, so we are gonna use that additional information. Lay, uh, so let A, B be an element in this Cartesian product. Well, what can we say if we have an element in this Cartesian product? Well, if we look at the Cartesian product, what we know is that the first component is coming from this set and the second component is coming from this set. So this is telling us. This means that the element leader A belongs to the set A and little b is in the intersection of the sets B and C. That's what, we, what can we say. Yes, sir. Is that good? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, but this is telling us that if B is in this intersection, since little b is in B intersection C, little b is in the set B and Little b is in the set C. Is that okay? So we have, it's telling us that A is in A, the first component is in A, but the second component is in, in both B and C. So since little a is in A and Little b is in b, the pair a, b is in a Cartesian product b. But also, little a is in a and little b is in c, because little b is in both. So, A Cartesian, uh, sorry, A comma B, the pair A comma B is in A Cartesian product Z. 
But if the pair A, B is in A Cartesian product B, and the pair, the same pair A, B is in A Cartesian product C, we can conclude that A, B is in A Cartesian product B, intersection A Cartesian product C, as we want it to be. Okay? So every pair that is in this Cartesian product is also in the intersection of these two Cartesian products. Okay? Well, so far, we have proven this inclusion here. We need to prove the reverse inclusion. So let's start now with an element in this intersection since the sets that we are intersecting are Cartesian products. We know that the element in that intersection must be a pair, so let A, comma B being an element in A Cartesian product B intersection A Cartesian product C. Okay, what can we say? Well, now we look at the intersection. That is the last operation that we are considering here. This means that A, comma B is in A Cartesian product B and a comma b is in a Cartesian product. These forces a in a and b in b and these forces a in a and little b in c. Is that okay? So in both cases, a is in a, and little b is in b and in c at the same time. Okay? But this last part is equivalent to uh, saying that B is in the intersection, little b is in the intersection of the sets B and C. So I keep this part and I rewrite this this way. But if little a is in a and b is in this intersection, when we form the pair, the pair little a, little b is in a Cartesian product b intersection c, which is giving us the other inclusion and the identity is proven. Okay? So, other similar properties are the following. So. That is that I put uh, A Cartesian product B intersection C is equal to uh, A Cartesian product B intersection A Cartesian product C. But it's the same if instead of having intersection in the second set, we have it in the first set. So pretty much the same thing. And with the union the property is a state value. I believe that uh, at this point you should be able to construct some examples to, if you want to uh, 
verify these properties with uh, an instance of the situations that we have here. And uh, if you understood the proof that we did before, you can try to prove them because it's not going to be uh, too different. There is another one, so I will suppose now. I will suppose now that suppose that A is a subset of a certain universe U, and B is a subset of another universe U prime. Again, U and U prime are not necessarily different. A and B are not necessarily different. And what we want to prove now is that A Cartesian product B complement using U Cartesian product U prime as the universe is gonna be A complement Cartesian product U prime union U Cartesian product B complement. All right, which we can also uh, write as A complement Cartesian product B Cartesian product A. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, union A Cartesian product. B complement union A complement Cartesian product B complement. So this one is not that easy. At least it's not so similar to the one that we did, which was very similar to these four uh, identities on top here. But we are going to go over the proof and we are going to see an example as well. All right, remember again that we are using here for this complement, we are using U Cartesian product U prime as the universe. So the universe for A cannot be the universe for this Cartesian product. The elements here are pairs. The elements here are not necessarily pairs. Right. All right. Let's try. Let's try to prove this identity here. So, what we are doing with this complement is negating that the pair is in this Cartesian product. So, the pair. What we have is the pair. A B is in a Cartesian product B, if and only if. A, little a is an element of the set A, and at the same time, little b is an element of the set B. Is that okay? So this is if we are considering a pair in this Cartesian product. But this complement here, what we are doing is negating this. So we are negating this. It's equivalent to negating this second statement here, all right? But, so, this means the negation of this statement is gonna be true every time this statement is false. And the negation of this statement is gonna be false every time that, every time that this statement is true. But when this statement is true, this is gonna be true when this one is true and this one is true. So, if, for the negation of this statement to be true, we need this one false. It suffices that only one of these two statements, only one of these two conditions fails. So if for that statement, this compound statement to be true, we need both true. For this statement to be false, we don't need both false. We don't need all that. Obviously, if both are false, that statement is going to be false. But it suffices that one is false for that statement to be 
to be false. Is that okay? So that means that the negation of this and here is not A belongs to A or not B belongs to B. Is that okay? Or if you prefer, you can you can remember uh, the Morgan's law that we studied previously. So this is A. You want to see it this way? Even though in this case it's not what that is not the intersection. What we are doing, but. If we have a complement outside intersection, this is complement of the first or union complement of the second. Even though in this case, that's not exactly what we are doing because we are looking at A and B, not as part of something that is common to the same set, but the same philosophy applies. Is that okay? All right. What is this telling us now? Concluding, this is telling us that the pair AB is in a Cartesian product B complement if and only if A is not little a is not in the set A or little b is not in the set B. And we can rewrite this as little a is in the complement of A or little b is in the complement of B. But now if we want to translate this into set operations, this or all these conditions here with the Cartesian product, when we look at this and we are thinking of a Cartesian product, this condition is only imposing some, some restrictions on A. Only this condition here. But B is free. So, if we want to pass from this condition to a Cartesian product, this means that AB is in a complement, and since nothing is said about B, B is free. So, it suffices to take any B from the universe. For the universe of B. From the universe of B. Now, if we look at this condition here, this condition here is only imposing some restrictions on B, but nothing is said about A. So, if we think of this as a condition that is imposed on a pair, A is free, which means that we can take anything from the universe that contains the set A, but the little b, the second component, must be in B component. And this or now becomes union. And this is exactly the identity that we wanted to prove. Summarizing, a pair is in this Cartesian product if both components, the first component is in A and the second component is in B. So it's outside this Cartesian product, not if both components are outside the respective set. This is at least one of the components outside the respective set. So for a pair not to be in this Cartesian product, it suffices if the first component is not in A or the second component is not in B. Obviously, if both conditions are satisfied at the same time, the pair is going to be outside too, but we don't need all that. It suffices that one of the components is outside the corresponding set. Is that okay? That's what we are claiming here. For a pair to be outside the Cartesian product, it suffices that the first component is not in A or the second component is not in B. If we look at this as a condition that is imposed on the whole pair, nothing is said about B, so B can be any element in the universe for the set B. But the first component, little a, must be outside a in the complement of a. And if we look at this as, again as a condition imposed on the whole pair, nothing is said about the first component. 
the second component must be in the complement of B, but the first component can be any element in the universe Q. So if it's here or here, we are including that pair. Okay? All pairs that are in this set, we are including them. Those pairs that are in this set, we are including them too. Obviously, if the pairs are in both, are welcome as well. Is that okay? All right. So notice the following. What is going to be the intersection now? Notice the following now. I can come here and I can rewrite this this way. A, a complement of A, Cartesian product. But I can rewrite this universe as B union B complement. We already know that that is true. Union. And this universe here, I can rewrite it as A union A complement. So all these can be rewritten as A union, A complement, all that Cartesian product B complement. And according to the properties that we saw before, we can distribute this Cartesian product. So this is the same as A complement Cartesian product B union A complement Cartesian product B complement union and this one here again we can distribute so a cartesian product b complement union a complement cartesian product b complement is that okay oh well, if you notice now what is the inter in the intersection between these two sets is exactly a complement Cartesian product B complement, which we are taking twice. Or the union is idempotent, so we don't need to take these two i, so we can discard one of them. And this is also equal to A complement Cartesian product B union. I can commute this, so A Cartesian product B complement union. A complement Cartesian product B complement. In this case, you are uh, we are being more specific. Is that okay? So we have that the complement of this Cartesian product is either the complement of A Cartesian product, the universe for the set B U prime union, the universe for the set A Cartesian product B complement, or we can decompose this, split this a little bit more. And write it as A complement Cartesian product B union, A Cartesian product B complement, union, A complement Cartesian product B complement. So notice that in this case, only the first condition is failing. The first component is not in A. In this case, only the second condition is failing. The second component is not in B. And in this case, both are failing. It's what we said before. Either the first component fails, only the first component fails to be in A, or the second component, only the second component fails to be in B, or both components fail to be in uh, the respective set. So, okay. so we are going to illustrate now this identity with an example. And I think that with that example, you you can't get any detail that you might be missing so far. All right, let's consider the following example. Let's take U as one, two, three, four, U prime as A, B, C, A as one three and b as a all right and using these specific sets let's verify this is equal here so i'm gonna call another student to help me with this with this example hello uh so i'm gonna be trying to solve the exercise uh, first, as a reference, we, we need to get the universe. The universe for A, Cartesian product B uh, complement will be the Cartesian product between U, the universe, and U prime. So first, we're going to get this Cartesian product. Remember, uh, this has four elements and it has 
three elements, so it will be a total of 12 elements. So let's do that first. So the first part will be the first uh, sequence of part will be starting with the first element of u Cartesian product each element to u prime so it will be one uh, comma a second element will be one comma b third will be one c and then we move on to the second uh, component of the first unit of the universe and it will be the same within the same sequence so it'll be second component will be two with the first component of the u prime will be two a the first two a uh then we'll have two b and the period two c okay uh we'll be moving on to the third component of the first set, which is three, the third element. The third element of the of the universe will be three, a the first pair, three uh, b, and three c. And lastly, we're gonna move on to the fourth element, which is number four, and we repeat the same process for a. B and the last four C and this will be our universe for the Cartesian product. Now we can take the Cartesian product between set A and set B, and we can to see the the complement referring to the universe. So uh, let's, let's do this. So just a moment. So notice that in this universe here, we said here we have four elements. This one here we have three elements. So in new Cartesian product U prime, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve elements. Is that okay? That is the the property that we have if we have two finite sets and the first one has n elements in this case n is equal to four and in the second one we have n elements we are going to have n times n elements in the Cartesian pro so four times three twelve so we are good we are good so far great so now we're going to take the Cartesian probably between a and b how many elements we are going to have in a Cartesian pro b abraham uh Two elements. Because now in A we have two, two elements. And, and then in, and in B one. we have only one. Two times one. So uh first first element will be the first uh the first pair will be with the first element of A with the first element of the only element of B which is one the pair one A. Uh second will be the second element with the element in B, which is three A. And those will be our two elements for a Cartesian product B. So if in the universe for this Cartesian product we have 12 pairs and in the Cartesian product itself we have only two pairs, how many elements we are going to have in the complement? The complement will be 10 because it's everything that is it's Everything that is in the universe that is not in the Cartesian product. If here we have 12, when we discard these two, we are going to have 10 pairs left. So yes, in the complement we are going to have 10. That is the following. That is the following. How many elements we are going to have in a complement? How many elements we are going to have in a complement? A complement. Uh, yes. Now notice that we are taking the complement of A just here. The universe for A is U. Two. So how many elements we have in a complement? It will be two. Two, two because it's everything that is in this universe and not in A. We discard one, we discard three, and only two and four are left. So, A complement, we have two. How many elements we have in B complement? Two, also two. So, 
when I use a set with these two bars here, I'm meaning the number of elements in that set. So far, uh, we are gonna use that for finite sets. So it's gonna be two as well because we discard A, only B and C are gonna be left. Yes. Sir. So how many elements we are gonna have in A complement Cartesian product U prime? So A complement is two, U prime. We have three elements, two, three, uh, six. So here we are gonna have seeds. And how many elements we are gonna have in new Cartesian product B complement? Uh, four, eight. 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 And this is, if we take all these pairs together, we are gonna have six here and eight here, six plus eight. Fourteen. Fourteen. However, we reach the, the conclusion here that in the complement we have only 10 pairs. Why we have 14 pairs if we take this sequence of operations here? What do you think that is happening? Why? We have, these two sets are supposed to be the same set. So why we have 14 here and 10 here? I, I, my, I don't know if I'm right. My supposition is we're doing Cartesian product here with the universe, uh, which is, has more elements than if we do it with uh, two sets. Because well, the only thing that what is happening here is that these two sets have an intersection. And what is happening here is that the intersection of these two sets is being counted twice. Because if we have common pairs here, when we count these six elements, we are going to be counting in particular the elements in the intersection. Yes. When we count the eight pairs here, we are going to be counting again the elements in the intersection. So that's the reason these two numbers are not matching, because the intersection is being counted twice. So to see the real numbers in this of elements in this union, we need to subtract the elements in the intersection because we have count uh, have counted them twice. Well, how many elements we have in a complement Cartesian product B complement? That is the intersection of these four. two sets. Uh, four. Four, four. Because it's gonna be two times two. And now it's 14 minus four. Ten. Ten again. So everything is working. Yep. So let's let's verify. Let's get the elements then service to verify that everything is good. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to get the the Eric A Cartesian product B complement. Uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna highlight the the elements right here, and and I'm gonna start with A Cartesian product B because it has uh, two uh, it has two components. So let's see, one comma eight. It's right here, so we're gonna discard this uh, this pair, and then we have three comma nine, three comma nine right here, and we're gonna discard this pair. So finally, if we do a Cartesian product B complement, that will be. Oh. So be careful when you write this complement because if you write this way, it seems to be that yep. this complement is only affecting B, and the result is gonna it's not gonna be the same. So yep. you need those parentheses. I think it's better if we write it here just to have more space. Okay, so we said that we we're gonna discard this pair because it's in in the comp it's not in the complement. It's in a Cartesian product B. So the first pair will be one comma B. Second pair one C. Third will be two A. Fourth will be two B. We included. Uh, fifth two C. We said we we're discarding three A because it's in a Cartesian product B, so it's not in the complement, and so it will be three B. Then followed by three C. We have four A. I'm gonna uh, do it down here. Four A. Four B. And lastly, four C. And uh, we reached our A Cartesian product B, and then the complement of these two. Uh, it's as we said before. It's supposed to be ten elements. Let's check that is uh, that we've done the right. 
calculation. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So it seems that we did it right. Now uh, we're gonna find, uh, we're gonna go to the second side of our exercise. Uh, we have the, we, we need to find a complement Cartesian product U prime, uh, and then we're gonna find the universe Cartesian product B complement, and at the end, the union between these two sets. Uh, first, uh, we have A complement, as we see, uh, A has two elements, one and three, and then the, this is the universe, uh, one, two, three, and four. So A complement will be everything that it's at outside of the set, the set A. Uh, in this case, uh, we have one and three. So the A complement will be two and four, uh, which we already have right here. And then we go to U prime and it's well, B has one, only one element and then U prime has three. So the complement should have two, uh, which is B and C. And we already have it over here. Uh, so now we're ready to perform this operation. Now that we have a complement, the, the operation will be a complement, critician product, U prime. So um, a complement condition product u prime. If we said that a complement is two and four, and then u prime will be a, b, and c. We start with the first element of u complement, uh, which is two. So the first part will be the first element followed by each uh, element of u prime. So the first part will be two, a, second pair will be to be and the third will be to C okay so to C now uh, we go to the second element which is 4 for A for B and for C Okay, perfect. So uh, just to confirm, A complement has two elements. Um, U prime has three, two times three is six, supposed to be six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have our six elements. Okay, uh, now, now we're gonna go to the second, which is the universe times B complement. Cartesian product B complement, I'm sorry. Second to B to C three B three C and the last four B and four C. And, uh, all right, what is going to be the intersection of these two? So the intersection will be everything that they have in common. All right. I'm on the two sets. So Circle the, the pairs that they have in common. Please. Let's use the color blue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here that has less uh, elements. 2A, it's not here, 2B, it's here. 2C. 4A is not here, 4B, and then 4C. All right. So now to get the union, we need to take every pair that is either here or here. If the pair is repeated, we take it only once. Yes or So 1B, we have it here. 1C, we have it here. 2A, we have it here. 2B is in both. 2C is in both. 3B is here. 
3C is here. 4A is here. 4B is in both and 4C is in both and all elements here are marked and all elements here are marked so obviously the union of these two is going to be the same as the complement of a Cartesian per b and the sets are the same as we were expecting okay to conclude uh, i will introduce the concept of binary relation and before doing it formally i will provide you with some examples that we have in practice. So, for example, if we think of uh, relationships between two people, we can say, for example, that uh, person one is related to person two if they are friends, for example. Right? And, well, the way that we are defining this here doesn't matter the order in which we take these two people because we are uh, considering here that if person one is a friend of person two, person two is gonna be also a friend of person one, so in this case, the order in which we take the two people doesn't matter. Maybe we consider, we consider another uh, common relationship between people, that property is not gonna be valid anymore, so person one is in love with person two. This is another very common relation. Now in this case, the order matters. The order matters because person one can be in love with person two, but person two is not necessarily in love with person one. So in this case, the relation goes in only one direction. Okay? Oh, these two examples, the objects that we are relating are of the same kind, people, but for example, we can be related to an institution oh. and say a given person is related to a certain school institution if that person is taking any class at that institution. All right. And now we are relating objects of different kinds. We can be related to a number, for example. A person is related to the, say, natural number n if n is. the person's age, let's say years. All right? So in all these examples that are relation between these two, two objects, we have two objects and what we are establishing here is a certain property that is the one that we are using to determine if the two given objects are related or not. Okay, so what do we need to define an arbitrary binary relation? Well, what we are going to need to define an arbitrary binary relation is a first set A 
for the objects that we are taking as the first object, okay? And another set B, that is the set for the second object, all right? As you can see, A and B are not necessarily different, but they can be different, as in these two examples, all right? And in every case, what we are doing is giving an object here and an object here, we are using this property, at least in these examples, to determine if they are related or not. Okay? So, if they are related, they are forming an ordered pair. An ordered pair, so, it's going to be an element of this Cartesian product. If they are not related, well, they are not forming any pair, which is telling us that given a certain property that we are using to determine if the two given objects are related or not, uh, not necessarily the relation is going to produce all possible pairs in that Cartesian problem, maybe it's just a subset. And that's the idea, that's the idea that we are going to use for a binary relation. The formal definition of a binary relation is going to be a subset of the Cartesian product of A and B. And this course here, I will suppose that at least one pair is firm, so it's gonna be a non-empty subset. All right, so we have the following definition. A binary relation from the set A to the set B is a non-empty subset of a Cartesian product. So notice that I will give a name to this binary relation, binary relation R from the set A to the set B is a non-empty subset of a Cartesian product B which means that if the pair A, B is in R, what we are claiming here is that A, the object A, the element A, is related to the object B, or element B. Okay, as we saw in the samples before, we are not considering here a subset of two elements, but an ordered pair because for many relations, A can be related to B, but B not related to A. Even though we can consider a different relation in which B is going to be related to A, depending on what we are looking at, A can be related to B and B not related to B. A, so the order matters, and that's the reason we are considering here order pairs and not subsets. So, this is the formal definition of a binary relation. Is that okay? All right.